everybody. My name is Lisa. You're watching the Stop Dropping a Knit podcast. And today, we're going to look at what's in all of these project bags. Hey, I missed one. I have one other one I'm staring at right here. I also have something in this basket. So, add that to the mix. These are lingering projects, lingering whips. We are going to decide whether to finish or frog or pivot and change directions in 2024. This is another one of my favorite videos to record every year. I tend to record this video right around the new year. So today is January 3rd. So I can get an idea of what what's going on in all these bags you know the beginning of the year is always a time when many of us definitely myself like to reorder things like get things together get things seeming to have some kind of order to them so that we can you know feel focused with what we intend to do with our lives and our projects and you know this this applies to every aspect of your lives for me the start of the year is just a really great time to just kind of look at everything that I've got going with my knitting projects, see what's lurking inside all of these bags, and make a plan. Have my tastes changed since I started this project? Why did something get pushed aside? Am I close to finishing it and just life got in the way? Or am I just really not interested in this project anymore? So come with me as I look inside all these project bags and we can make these decisions together. So I'm gonna be getting organized around my whips for the new year. I would like to record another video soon with some loose 2024 knitting plans. Probably not gonna do like a whole, my plans for all of 2024 because let's be real. I don't think a single person that makes those videos actually sticks 100% to those plans. So why bother recording it? Instead, I like to create kind of an overall goal, maybe a number of projects to aim for. Last year it was knit 23 and 23. I did not meet that goal and that's okay. Life happened somewhere in there and you know, when I made the video of all of the things that I completed knitting in 2023, I was really able to, to get it all together in one place and see, wow, I really did accomplish a lot. So I think it's fun to just have a number, kind of a loose overall goal for the year. But as far as specific projects, some of those will come from these whips here that will go on that list. Like, I definitely want to get these done in this year. Some of these whips might be longer term projects than 2024, and that is okay. Um, and I, I'm leaving myself room for brand new sparkly cast-ons and all the fun that comes with new pattern releases and new yarn choices and all of that good stuff. So officially, my goal for the new year is to knit 24 and 24, but right now we are going to have a look inside these bags and see which of these projects is going to make it onto that knit 24 and 24 wish list. So yesterday I sat down and I made a list of all of the projects that are in these bags. Um, I went through my notes from previous podcasts and was really able to see exactly which projects started from before 2023 because we still have a few of those and which are more recent. So I have on my lingering whips list 13 items and honestly three of those are even debatable that they should even be on this list. So we're going to call it 10 projects and yeah, 10 10 official projects, but I'm going to walk you through all 13 and why they are even on this list to begin with. I'm going to pivot, you guys. I thought I was going to walk you guys through the oldest whips from furthest away to the most recent whips. I think we're going to start with the most recent and go backwards from there. 
I will have information and links to all of these projects in the description box below this video where you can also find my Instagram at Lisa Westervelt Flute Studio and my Ravelry which is LisaJack78. So any questions you have about anything that I talk about here in this video just refer to my Ravelry if Ravelry is accessible for you. I will have all of the information as to what yarns I'm using. I'm pretty good about updating Ravelry. I'll try to make sure I have all of that updated on there before this video goes live. No promises. So first on my list is in this Hide and Hammer project bag. I love this project bag so much. And what is in here is the Sunset Camisole by Sari Nordland. So the Sunset Camisole from Sari Nordland is a really adorable cami and she knit it out of, let's see if I can accurately pronounce this. Mine is falling apart here, but the yarn that she knit her sample out of, I had happened to have in my stash. So this is, I want to say Antigone Antigone. I have no idea, <laughs> but it is um, a yarn from Dererum Natura in, in it's a French yarn. I'm probably saying that completely wrong, but the color that I'm using for this project is called Prunel. So I picked up this yarn at Fiber Space when we were passing through Northern Virginia, it's in Alexandria, um, at some point, and it was Mother's Day weekend, and so this was my Mother's Day gift from my husband and my son. And let's see, I think I picked up four balls of this, and it is 100% linen. So this is my very first 100% linen yarn that I've ever tried to work with. And I'm really enjoying it. So this, this is the pro progress that I had made <laughs> on the Sunset Camisole. So basically it kind of looks like a little bra without straps right now. So I've got my waist yarn holding it all together. So basically you start out this pattern by knitting four identical triangles and then attaching them together. And we're now at the point where I can knit in the round and do some increases and it's, it's mindless stockinette from here while you finish the body. And then the fun part is that nice ruffle that goes across the top. So this is definitely going on to my knit 24 and 24 list. I definitely intend to finish this project. I have not tried it on so far, so things could change if the fit turns out not to be right. I don't remember what size I'm knitting or anything like that. Usually I go with about the size three, so I'm guessing it's in that area size three, size medium, you know, something like that. But um, yeah, I basically got a really good start on it and then just, I think, focused on a different project that ended up getting finished. So that is the first project that is lingering in my bags. And I definitely intend to finish this one, probably because it's linen. I have no immediate plans to knit on it this winter. So this might just stay off to the side until we start going into spring and get toward that warmer, summery weather. Okay, let's find number 12, which is, I think in this one here. This is not a fancy project bag, it's just a little tote bag. And number 12 is my Miserina tea which is a pattern by Caitlin Hunter. And she released this one a few summers ago as part of her Nidalee series. And I started this one in June, 2023. So this one has a story. This one is absolutely on my Knit 24 and 24 list. I have 1000% intentions to finish this this spring but I'm going to tell you why this ended up backtracking 
So the yarns I'm using for the Miserina tea are my own naturally dyed yarns on my singles base, which you can find in my shop, stopdropandknit.com. And these are the colors that I'm using for this project. And they're so beautiful. The yellow was dyed with goldenrod leaves and the pink and the tannish one were both dyed with avocado. So I had been much, much farther and we're dropping things as we do here. I had been much farther along with this process and a kind viewer pointed out to me that I forgot to knit the little cables in between each of the flower color work motives. And I was gonna be fine with that, except that it threw my whole stitch count off. And I decided that if I was going to knit this tee, I wanted to do it correctly. So I, I had pretty much had almost the whole color work chart done at that point. So it was pretty painful to rip it all the way back. I actually ripped it all the way back, redid the short rows, and I have redone the lace motif. And I, I think I redid it in September or, or August. Like I was, I ripped it out early August and started working on it again and had every intention of trying to finish it that month. But I think I began working on Owen's sweater that I was trying to get ready for him for his back to school fourth grade pictures. So again, this is just one that got pushed to the side. I have every intention of getting it done this year. So this one, the Miserina T, is definitely going on my Knit 24 and 24 list. The next one is one of the three that I said kind of doesn't need to be on this list, but I am putting it on here anyway. And that is I had knit this adorable bunny. This is Good Bunny. And it's a kit that I got from Susan B. Anderson at Barrett Wilco. And I've got most of it done here. I should close the blinds. Hold on a second. Oh yeah, that lighting is much better. Good. Okay, so I've got most of her done. She's The whole body of the bunny is done. She's got some clothes on and everything. But she also comes with some really cute winter accessories. There's a cute little hat and a little shawl. Maybe one other little thing. It could just even be the hat and the shawl. And the hat has a cute little pom-pom. It's absolutely adorable. And at the time that I knit the bunny, it was Easter, so it was spring. So I said, you know what? Bunny just needs clothes. Bunny doesn't need those winter accessories yet. So I just put Bunny aside. I called her done at the time. And I still have those cute little accessories to knit up. So uh, I'll just show you the yarns for these up up close. So you can see the, the yarns that Susan B. Anderson includes in the kit. They're so beautiful. So I think, you know, this is going to go on the list too because it's such a quick little project that, you know, it, it'll be an easy win towards that 24 and 24 goal. I counted Bunny as my 2023, one of my 2023 knits, but I think that the accessories, you know, they're like little doll, doll accessories. Those, those can count, right? So yeah, so those are going to go on my let's just get this all the way done list. I actually have a second Good Bunny kit, so maybe I'll even get the second bunny knit up for this Easter because we have two bunnies in our family, Felix and Elmer. So it might be really cute to have a little playmate for this bunny here. So in March 2023, I started working on the Hush sweater by Tin Can Knits. That one is in this project bag here. Actually, it's just another tote bag from a store. Um, this one... I am going to put this high on the list to finish because we only need sleeves. So this sweater, I was looking for 
a pattern that I could use with this yarn that I had deep, deep, deep in stash. I mean, like from 2010, 2012, more than a dozen years, about a dozen years, you know, something like that. So I've got the yarn right here, actually. This has been in my stash forever. I think the color is the koala color and this is Eco Duo and it is a yarn from Cascade and the composition of it is 70% undyed baby alpaca and 30% undyed merino wool. So this yarn has just been sitting and sitting and sitting in my stash for so long and I wanted to knit something from it. So I found the Hush pattern and this is a paid for pattern by Tin Can Knits. This actually came out, I wanna say last fall, like it's a pretty recent pattern of theirs. And the yarn just kind of does this little self stripey thing, which is kind of nice, but there's these really simple cables at the top. I know that there's a lot of alpaca content and so that there's a good chance that this is going to stretch out quite a bit, but I really don't care. I am just, I was so excited to have a purpose for the yarn and all that this needs now is sleeves and actually maybe a neckline. I have a feeling that there's probably a neck band as well. But this is super close to being finished, so this is going to be something that I actually start working on again this month because we're in sweater weather, and how nice would it be to just throw a couple sleeves on this sweater, maybe a neck band too, and have a new sweater to wear while I can, while it's like cold out. So, so this is also 100% going to get finished. It's well underway. Love the way that the light is actually showing those cables right now. Yeah, so this is Hush by Tin Can Knits. Okay, so I have also from hmm, March, I cast on the Fairy Ring Socks. And this is a project, the yarn was sent to me from Wonderland Yarns. I am a brand ambassador with them, which means that I do get yarn from them at no charge. Um, but I haven't actually asked them for yarn in quite a long time because I haven't knit, finished knitting the things that they sent me yet. Anyway, um, I loved this pattern because of the mushrooms. And um, if you guys are familiar with my channel already, you'll know that my favorite thing to natural dye my yarn with is mushrooms. So one of my favorite things to do is forage in the woods and find dye mushrooms that I can use for dyeing my yarn. So when I saw this pattern, this was some part of their sock club. I think they have a sock club like every month or something and you get yarn and you get a pattern. And so I love the yarn. The yarn is beautiful. I, I've got the yarn here I can show you, but this does not fit me. I even went down a couple needle sizes to the smallest needles that I have, which are a size zero, and um, they're still too big. And they're just kind of a funny shape. But let me get the, um, that's not it. Where's the other one? I'm so prepared, guys. That's because we're going through project bags. It's gotta be, here it is. It is in here. So this is the yarn. I don't actually know because it came as a kit. I don't know like what the colorways are or anything, but it's really, really pretty. So there's this little mini skein that's kind of blue with some speckles that go with this beautiful variegated pink yarn here. So I 100% love the yarn. I am going to Sadly, rip this sock out. I'm gonna repurpose the yarn and we're gonna knit different socks with it because the yarn is too good and the pattern just didn't work for my teeny tiny feet. So, I mean, I can wear them. The foot part fits fine, but the whole, um, like there's all, this, there's all this calf shaping and I just don't need that on my socks. I think these are actually the first pair of color knit, color, color work, color knit 
color work socks that I have ever knit. I've knit tons of socks before um, and I could just kind of tell right away that these weren't going to work. Now another thing that I could do is maybe re-knit the socks but rework the numbers for the pattern of the little mushroom so that I'm just have a smaller circumference around my leg. But I I feel like I feel like this is just not the project that I want to work on anymore. Like I knit it. It was fun to knit, but this this just doesn't it doesn't do it for me. This does not fit my feet. They're going to be slouchy around my legs and you don't want slouchy socks when you've got color work. There's there's no point in doing color work for a slouchy sock cuz then you can't see it. So yeah, so this is going into the frog pile and we will be repurposing this yarn for some other socks. I don't know if I'll get them knit up this year or not, but eventually they will. So also in this bag, okay, so let's just talk about for a second how cute this little bag is. I went into the city one day last year and I went to Nitty City which is on the Upper West Side. And look how cute this little bag is. Yeah, I love this bag so much. So when I went to Nitty City, I went with the goal to purchase yarn to knit the Har Harlow, yeah, the Harlow V-neck sweater by Kadri. And so I've got all this really beautiful yarn. Um, let me see. I'm trying to find the ones that I did not skein up. Well, maybe I skeined them all up already, actually. Yeah. That's okay. This one just doesn't have a label. But these are yarns from Plucky. Also, I had never worked with Plucky yarn before. And these are beautiful. The colors are so, so, so pretty. No, no. I might have to adjust the... There we go the blinds again but so this is a Surrey alpaca and do I have a label yeah this one is Lux merino light it is a sport weight yarn and this is 100% ultra fine merino the color is limerick and I shopped for this right at the start of March so it's not like a green green but I it's like a bluish green like a teal it's so so pretty and I just thought that this would be a really fun greenish bluish green sweater to you know have around St. Patrick's Day time well let me tell you. So let's see, the, the plume, this is called plume lace, and this is Surrey alpaca and silk. So it is 74% baby Surrey alpaca and 26% silk. So I was gonna hold these together. That's still my plan, is to hold these together. Knit a beautiful sweater. So. I did the thing that you do when you start knitting a sweater and I cast on a gauge swatch and I, I have so I have knit so many gauge swatches for this sweater and to get gauge with this combination of yarns I had to go down like I don't even have I've got notes somewhere probably in this notebook right here I'm not gonna dig out the notes but I had to go down so many needle sizes. I think that it started out with a size eight needle size, and I was down to something like a three or a four. I don't remember quite what I was down to um, in order to get gauge for that pattern. And of course I did not, of course I didn't label these, like what needle size is which swatch, because that would be the smart thing to do, right? Look at this one though. Like, I, I have knit so much of this yarn. I love the yarn. But you can see, like, we started out here, and I guess it's really like upside down. So we started out here with like this nice loose. So this is the, with like, you know, the recommended needle size. We started out here, it's, it's wrinkled. We went down a needle size. <laughs> 
I could probably figure it out. We went down another needle size and we went down another needle size. And so, you know, I've got already four or five, one, two, three, four different four different gauge swatches right here, which basically I could probably make this into a cowl now if I wanted. Um, and then two more. And I think at the point where I separated them, well, I had run out of yarn from the ball. And I also then, I think, was experimenting with needle material as well as size. So I, I think I had narrowed it down to a size and then was trying to see if changing from metal needles to wooden needles with like a larger size needle would tighten up that gauge a little bit so that I didn't have to go down like 12,000 needle sizes. But I have none of this labeled. So I can probably figure it out for this one just based on the needle size that I started with and going down one each time. I have no idea what these are. Um, yeah, I've got I've got all kinds of needles in here. Oh, here's another one. Here we go. And I have I have a needle shoved in the middle of this. I mean, I have so many swatches. What did I swatch for this? Seven times. Seven times. I have seven swatches. Four here. Three separate ones. I did not spend all this money on all of this gorgeous yarn just to have a whole bunch of swatches, you guys. So my question now, I definitely want to use this yarn. I would like to do something with this yarn this year, probably, is what I think. Um, but I'm not sure what direction I should go, if I should try to make is trying to make this yarn work for the harlow v-neck sweater is that like trying to fit a square into a round hole a square peg into a round hole whatever that expression is like am i just not going to have success because i'm using a surrey instead of a mohair and that affects the gauge a little bit or should i continue with that sweater or should i pick a fabric that i like from here figure out what the gauge is, and then search Ravelry for a pattern that has that gauge already that might work better than the Harlow V-neck sweater. So that's, that's where my brain is going with this one. Just trying to kind of, I need to figure out what on earth I'm going to do. Rip out a million swatches and turn that into something actually usable. Okay, that was what was supposed to be my Harlow V-neck sweater. So the last knit that I cast on in 2023, before we go into knits that have been lingering longer than that, is the Big Cozy Cardi by Andrea Mowry. And remember, I shopped the yarn for this project in 2022, but I think it was not until January 23 that I actually cast it on or it was right on the border of 22, 23. I'm not exactly sure. So this is a sweater I would really like to knit, but as you can see, I'm not that far into it. Um, this is gonna be one of those like really slow sweater projects. So it's got this, this texture. I think maybe that's the right side of it. Not totally sure. <laughs> which is the right side and which is the wrong side. Honestly, maybe this is the right side. This could be the right side. So I guess step one is figure out which is the right side of the sweater and which is the wrong side of the sweater because I haven't worked on this since last January. It's been a year. And I think that this is where one of my size four needles has disappeared too. So, yeah, so I am using the yarn recommended for in the pattern, and that is Sky Dance, which is Brooklyn General's like home yarn. So this is grown on small farms in New York, spun and hand dyed in New York, and the fiber is Cormo, Merino, and Romney, and it's called Ursa Minor. So which color is this? Kitchen Sink? Or now steamy kitchen window is this color 
So this is the same the same that uh, Andrea Mowry knit hers out of, and also the same the same um, this is called Mr. Pocket. It's O Dang, and this is the silk surrey alpaca from Farmer's Daughter Fibers. So O Dang, O Dang. I have not gotten that far into this sweater. So. I would like to work on it this year, but because this one is really not far along at all, who knows if I'll actually finish it in 2024 or if this is going to become one of those longer term projects. Either is fine, but I do definitely want the finished garment. So now we are going back into 2022 and things that have lingered since then or before. Okay. I have two shawls by Stephen West, both of which I started in October 2022. And you can guess what one of those is. And that is the Twists and Turns shawl, which was the 2022 mystery knit along. This I'm going to finish. This is actually both of them are going to finish. But this one, I'm actually I am on clue for. So I yeah, I've made quite quite a bit of progress on this one. So I've got all of that done. The only thing, so I'm basically working now on this section on the other side. So there's the center of the shawl, clue two, <laughs> clue three was these things. And now I've started clue four on this side as well. So I'm halfway through clue four and I just have to go the rest of the way and get this done. But I, um, you know, this was a weird one. People had very conflicting opinions about this pattern. But I love the colors that I chose. This is another Wonderland Yarns sponsored project. So, you know, there's another reason that I definitely want to finish it because the yarn was so graciously provided for me to knit this, this shawl. And I do love and wear shawlography, which was the 2021 Mystery Knit Along shawl that Stephen West did. I wear that one all the time. Like I, that is my go-to shawl. It's nice and kind of blanket sized. So I know that because I chose colors and yarns that I really loved for this one, that this is definitely going to get finished. And I'm probably going to try to finish that this month or next so that I can get some wearing of it in before spring. So that's high on the knit 24 in 24 list, as well as my current favorite project that I have resumed working on. Oh, this is another cute little project bag that I got at Fiberspace. Um, yeah, don't, that's Danica Studio. But in here, my other Stephen West shawl pattern that uh, it's also going to be a longer term knit but I started this also in October of 2022 and that is my painting rainbows shawl this one is a shop sample and I love this one so much because it's focusing on all of my yarn that I dyed with mushrooms so all of these beautiful rainbow colors are have been dyed with mushrooms every single one of them except the only one is the bright purple there and that was done with lichen so it's i'm gonna love this finished object so much i you can see it's like an upside down rainbow right now so yeah it's it's slow going it takes me an hour and a half maybe to do one stripe because the rows are so long but this is really great tv knitting I've been attending a lot of Zoom events this month with Tabitha's 12 Days of Christmas that I was featured guest on a few, like last week sometime. And so I have pulled this out and I've been adding a stripe to it kind of during every Zoom. So this is high on the list of things to get finished this year, but it's going to be like a background project because it's going to take so long to do. So I'm not in a hurry to get it finished. I'm just going to keep working on it continuously until it's done. 
I think it's a really happy pattern to have done around the spring before the weather gets too warm because early spring here can be still quite chilly even into May. So I'm hoping to get it done maybe in the first half of the year. So definitely on the Knit 24 and 24 list. Oh, I skipped, I skipped one thing. I skipped one thing by accident and I knit, so this is another one that I said kind of might be on the list, might not be. I had knit Bryce, my husband, this moose last year for Christmas. And this was another one of the kits that Susan B. Anderson from Barrett Wilco puts together. She does the patterns and then sells the yarn for the kits. So you can see the moose has this cute little pine sweater on and I got the I got the moose done for my husband for Christmas and I gave him some moose, moose munch along with it, but I didn't have time to get the sweater knit up. And so I have the yarn like it's it's all caked up and ready to go so I would like to give Mr. Moose here his proper clothes and knit him the sweater so this is kind of high on the list I mean it's not huge priority but I just want to do it it'll be another one of those like just knit like a little tiny stuffed animal sweater knock it out that can be a small knit 24 and 24 project so yeah, so that that's when I skipped. I think I was working on him in December for Christmas and I just never got the sweater part of the knit finished. So it's like it's finished, but it could be enhanced with some proper clothes. Moose needs a sweater. So we're gonna knit the moose a sweater. Okay, let's see. I have three projects left. I'm probably gonna have to take a break in a minute while I get Owen off the bus. Now this one <laughs> is falling off the needles. This one has been lingering since July of 2021. So you guys saw this on last year's video. And when I moved into this apartment in the spring of 2021, I thought I need some dishcloths. And so I picked up a whole bunch of sugar and cream. I think it's called sugar and cream something like that it's it's for, you can just get it at like Joann's and yeah I don't remember exactly but it's just you get it at Joann's it's cotton and it's really thick and I started knitting this dishcloth and I'm gonna spread it out I've got these straight needles so I don't want it to fall off the needles um, but it's this I mean it's a really nice pattern is just not an exciting project because it's a dishcloth and so I, I mean I'm sure I'm gonna finish it at some point if it ends up being something that I knit in 2024 then it does it's certainly not gonna take a long time just kind of the motivation to knit a dishcloth is much much lower on the list than all the fun sweaters and accessories and things. Oh my goodness. So yeah, so there's that dishcloth. And then we've got two things left. And I've got a lot to say about both of them. But let's take a break because I do have to run to the bus stop. And so I'll be back in a few minutes. Okay, we are back. Owen is home from school and he is set up with his iPad for about, I think I only need about 15 more minutes to finish talking about the last two things on my list. All right, so now we're going way back to 2020, you guys. These last two you have seen, I guess in every single Lingering Whips video I have ever made for my channel. And we are now in year three so I made one in at the end of 2020, going 2021. Yeah, so this is probably my third one or my fourth one. Don't remember. Third one, third video, I think. Okay, so we've got this one I know you've seen. I mean, you've seen all of them. But this is, in this basket, The Shift Cowl by Andrea Mowry. Okay, I know what you guys are going to say. You're gonna say, 
why don't you just frog that one and use the yarn for something else? It's been on your whips list for three years now. But no, I picked it up again the last couple of days and I added a whole other section to it and I am actually really having fun working on it now. So I think that the difference, okay, so this is probably lingering. You know, it's not, not the fault of the pattern, not the fault of the yarn. I just tend to be a sweater knitter and I just gravitate toward knitting garments. And so there would just always be some garment that I was working on. I know that first year I did quite a number of test knits. So the test knits always had deadlines which took priority. And it honestly got shoved away in a bag and just didn't see the light of day for quite a while. Remember last year, I finally put it in this basket and said, I've got to leave the basket out so that I see it so that I'll work on it because out of sight, out of mind. Well, I took this basket and I put it in a bin and I just dropped everything in the basket, you guys. Oh my goodness, hold on. So I took the whole basket and I put the basket in a bin under the table. So it was still out of sight, out of mind. But, oh my gosh, we're stuck. Okay, so I'm interested though in working on this now, A, because it's one of two forever long lingering whips. And I love the colors. The yarn I'm using is the same spin cycle, the same exact three colors that um, Andrea Maori used in her sample when she released the pattern. I didn't purchase the yarn at that time, but like a year or two later, spin cycle re-released the same three colors, you know, which, you know, none of their colors are ever exact, which is also fine, but the three colorways. So basically I'm knitting it in the same, same exact colorways as Andrea knit hers. But I think what's really got me interested in working on this and finishing it up now is because I just knit her shifty hat, which was the, maybe it's not shifty, it's shift along, the shift along hat. And I'll stick a picture of that because it's, it's in the bedroom with Owen right now. Um, and I just knit that up last month with um, a mini skein set of mine. And it was really fun. The pattern was really fun and really easy. And I really enjoyed uh, the knitting process of all of the, I guess it's, is it mosaic knitting for this one? It's like just slip stitches with the color work. So it's super simple. Um, and that project went really, really quickly. So that got me thinking like, why haven't I finished this yet? So now I've got it back out and this is going to be done this month because I have done out of the seven sections, I have checked off four of them now. So I finished the second half of section four last night. So I only have sections five, six, and seven left to go. So we've made quite a bit of progress and yeah, I'm excited to, I'm excited. This, this is not going to be on the lingering whips list ever again. This is going to be in my 2024 finished knits video next year. I am confident I am getting that one done. So what do you guys think is my longest if it wasn't this one? There's one that's even longer term than that, still from 2020, but Let's see, the shift I started in July 2020 and this sweater here, I'll give you a hint, it's a sweater, it's a cardigan. I started in May of 2020 and this is another one that I really, really want the finished object so desperately, so much. And I guess there's only one. Oh my gosh, I skipped a project, you guys. How did I skip a project? I didn't write it on my list. That's what happened is I have the bag right here. We've got to backtrack, you guys. We're gonna go back to fall of 2022. No, fall of 2023. This was this year's. And that's my Geo Gradient shawl by Stephen West. Oh my goodness. All right, so I have finished clue one only and yeah i mean if you guys don't know the whole 
geo gradient shawl controversy and all that i'm not going to get into it i have a video that i recorded back in october september october i guess it would be october when clue one was released so this is the version that i decided to knit and i finished it i've got some tidying up to do with the joins that i'm i'm not happy with i showed that up close in my last podcast episode video but i do love the yarn that i'm using and so this is going to be another shawl that gets finished i don't know that it'll get finished in 2024 as much as i would like to because i do still have those the twists and turns to finish plus the painting rainbows we'll see i am pretty close on twisting twists twisting rainbows there we go i just call it twisting rainbows on twists and turns all of these yarns were dyed with avocado except for the grayish brownish beigeish grayish um brownish gray gray i don't know what you would call a brownish gray but that was dyed with uh, black walnut and iron and everything else was dyed with avocado and so this is a sample also for my shop and this is on my Lux base and it is so drapey and lovely. It's a fingering weight yarn. It is merino, royal alpaca, and mulberry silk combination. Uh, I said in my podcast, but in case you guys didn't watch the podcast and do really like this color combination, I have in my shop, stopdropandknit.com, a collection of four yarns that are very similar to these colors here. They're not all dyed with avocado, but the resulting colors look pretty similar. So I did put a kit together that looks pretty close to this one. So if you guys are interested in this type of color combination with some naturally dyed yarn, then there's a kit sitting in the luxe section of my shop that you guys can go check out. But I do actually really love the finished Geo Gradient shawl and do want to knit that in completion because I think that the the overall shawl was kind of a little bit retro and it really looked really cool and I really love how my colors are and how the yarn is knitting up and everything the only thing I'm not happy about is my joining of the triangles but I'm going to clean that up a little bit at some point and then I'm going to continue with this one um but I think that the I'm going to focus on the other two Stephen West shawls before I dive into Clue 2 for this. So this is probably going to sit for a bit, and I think that is okay. Now let's go back to my longest, longest, longest whip ever. I share this project in this bag every single year. This is a bag that I unofficially got from the Long Island Yarn Crawl, which I did not actually go on in 2020. It happened right before the pandemic, like the week before. I was actually in Alabama that week before the pandemic and I did my own little Alabama yarn crawl. But the day before I left, I went to my local yarn shop because they got in some really yummy yarn from Oh my goodness, from Ba. I love Ba yarn. So let me get the, I'm trying to find one with a tag. Here we go. Ah, well, here's the tag. So here's a tag. And this is Ba Sonoma. And it's 100% superwash merino. And the colorway that I got is so pretty. It's called a yellow jacket. I love I love this yarn so much. It is grello and beautiful. I love it. I love it. I love it. Hi, Felix. Do you want to say hello? Probably not. You guys want to see my bunny? Hi, Fifi. This is Felix. And that was Felix. Doesn't let you hold him for very long. All right. So... If you are a long-term viewer, a long-term, if you're a long-time viewer, you might remember the project that I am working on with this yarn. It is a big one, and it is fantastic, and 
I was determined to knit this up last year and actually did resume work on it. And what am I talking about? But I am talking about Hohi Locatelli's All the Lights cardigan. It is so beautiful. This is like, just has a bit of everything, hence why she called it All the Lights. Um, I'm going to tell you in a minute after I show it off. So this is the back. That's the center back and the full back. Oh my goodness. Okay, so I'm loving it. I am under the armpits. So basically it starts, you know, she, Hohe Locatelli always has really unique construction. And so it starts like around the neck and the shoulders and I mean, there's, there's cables, there's Aran stitches, there's twisted stitches, there's bobbles. I mean, there's lace. It's, it's got everything. And I know I'm knitting it with a busy yarn, but I still love it so much. So what happened? You might want to know. Why is this still lingering? Aside from the fact that it's a very long-term project. <sighs> I mistwisted a cable more than once. And yeah, so I think on this side, it is good. There's like several charts for this cardigan that you have to follow. And so you're, you're alternating between like three or four different charts. And at some point I must have gone the wrong direction, like done the wrong cable chart. This is the good side. <laughs> this, so what I'm talking about is right at the neck band here, there is this, there is this cable, right? So that side is good. And this side is not. And I feel like it might really bug me just because of where it is and how prominently in the front of the sweater it is, because I did it more than once. So, and I, even though somebody had pointed it out to me, I didn't even realize where it was to notice it. So initially, at the very, very beginning, I missed a twist a uh, cable over here. I could kind of get away with that one, I think, because of its location on the shoulder. But then I did it again. And you guys can see I missed this one too. And so at that point, I was actually on a roll knitting it and everything and really excited to try to get this done. I was working on this. I want to say I was working on it around April, March, March, April, somewhere around that. And then I discovered my mistake and just the, the prominent location of it. And at that point, I, you know, I said I've been putting so much work into this sweater that I really feel like not only can I do it correctly, but I should do it correctly. Um, a lot of the times I'll just leave a mistake in a knit, but I feel like this one is in such a prominent location that I really should fix it. So I know that there is a method, a technique where you can drop all of the see this this frightens me though which is why it has been sitting in the naughty corner for the better part of 2023 now um i know that there's a technique that you can do where you just drop down those stitches and you can like redo the whole cable panel and i am really scared because this there's, there's so much work that went into this whole big first chunk of the sweater and so much intricate knitting with the construction. Um, I'm just really nervous about it. And so I have not yet worked up the courage and the determination to just set all the other projects aside and give myself some quiet focus time to fix it and to see if I can fix a cable. This is also a super wash yarn. So the idea of ripping back some yarn that is not going to naturally stick together and just having everything slide away. I'm a little bit scared. 
actually I'm a lot scared so yeah this is it's fantastic I have every intention of working my way through this and resuming it and finishing it I just have to work up the nerve to tackle the improperly twisted cable section on this one side but it's gonna be so good when it's done so I it's just been it's it's been in its naughty corner and I just yeah so there you go that's my longest longest lingering whip I'm actually really proud of myself though because this past year I went and reviewed my lingering whip list from last year and I had 12 items on that list and I finished six of them and some of those were really really long-term projects like like a couple of these but some of those had been lingering for more than a year or two as well so I did really really do good work completing some of those things from last year's list and I know that I'm gonna get there with this list as well I just not putting myself under the pressure to get everything from this list done within the next year because I know that I'm gonna be like ooh, that looks fun to knit and oh I've got yarn for that and you know there's there's just gonna be other projects that grab my attention and make me want to stop drop and knit them right then and there so for any of you wondering where did I get the name from a podcast that's kind of the idea of it is that every once in a while those patterns come along that make you stop and drop everything you're doing to knit it up right then and there and so I always leave room for those types of projects to happen in my life because that gets really fun and exciting um, so yeah I'm gonna I think what did I say I have total here is 13 but you saw a couple of these are just like little tiny accessories to go with stuffed animals so I'd say there's really like 10 or 11 bigger term projects on this list and some of them are farther along than others so I'm gonna be making some plans and share like what I'm gonna be focusing my energy on in an upcoming video and yeah I think I might do it seasonally or at least every every two months I think come up with a a plan that's going to combine projects from this list of whips with some new things that I have either been waiting for some time to cast on and it just feels like the right time or something that just all of a sudden grabs my attention that is just newly out and I just have to do it now so thank you so much for watching as I delved into all of the bags to take stock of the process the the progress or lack of that I have made on all of these projects and I look forward to doing so many more of these videos happy new year everybody and I'll see you in the next one bye bye